Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome you all for the lecture series in bioenergy over a span of two weeks. So, in the first five lectures, we talked about the energy economics, we talked about the basic concept of bioenergy. In the second week, we started with the most fundamental process by which uh, the whole bioenergetics machinery of the life forms and the perennial source of energy, the sun, it works in the form of photosynthesis. How the light energy is being utilized to synthesize molecules like carbohydrates and sugars. So, in that section, we talked about the simple reaction where carbon dioxide plus water making carbohydrate and as an end product as oxygen. And while dissecting the whole process, we talked about the two set of reactions, the light reaction and the dark reaction. So, in the light reaction, we talked about photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 and then we talked about the perennial source of electron in the form of water splitting cluster consisting of four manganese ions sitting at different oxidation state and where we concluded is how that cluster traps water molecules to water molecules and convert it into proton electrons and oxygen as a byproduct and how such cluster or water splitting mechanism is inspiration for hydrogen energy and we discussed that this kind of research will be discussed in the advanced topics. <clears throat> what we have not talked about about photosynthesis is the dark reaction or the reaction where carbon dioxide is converted into carbohydrate. As we have already told the oxygen is liberated by water and we have already through our lecture we have deciphered the mechanism, but carbon dioxide gets converted into carbohydrate the most fundamental reaction by which carbon is being captured or as a matter of fact the major source of biofuels on earth. So, <coughs> today we are starting next three weeks in other words next 15 lectures our thrust area will be biofuels. In the biofuel section, the way I have distributed initially I thought that in the second module itself we will talk about the origin of the biofuels in terms of conversion of carbon dioxide to carbohydrate and rich large sugar molecules, but then I kind of made a slight modification in it. Instead what we will do in these 15 lectures, we will talk about, we will distribute our lecture into two segment, two broad segment. The one segment where we will talk about how carbon dioxide is converted into carbohydrate, large sugar moieties through the process of dark cycle and the involvement in the basic history of this, how that happened, how it all started and what were, who were those landmark people who made this happen, role of one of the most abundant enzyme called Rubisco, which catalyzes this uh, <coughs> Kelvin cycle or uh, conversion of carbon dioxide to carbohydrate. Then we will talk about the photorespiration and how that compromises the formation of uh, sugar molecules and from there we will move on to C3 and C4 plant. So, this part, part 1 will constitute the origin of biofuels. Next phase will be once these biofuels are formed, how we transform these biofuels to form fuels for day to day use in automobiles 
or other industrial settings. So, that will be phase 2. So, these 15 lectures will be kind of divided into two main fragments as I have told you the formation of biofuels in the plant or in the green world and part 2 will be the conversion of those biological fuel or biological material into more efficient fuels by virtue of which they could be used in any kind of industrial setting as a readily available source of energy and in between or maybe we may go on advanced topics we will talk about what are the technologies which are involved in increasing the biomass or the biofuel of the plant what are the different agro techniques which are employed all over the world so we are into module 3 which is also week 3 w3 and this is under the heading as you will see in the curriculum as biofuel 1 2 and 3 so it's essentially week 1 week 2 and week 3 this is how this whole thing is divided in terms of its content so this is in terms of how this is going to proceed in the time and in terms of its content we will talk about the formation of energy rich molecule in biological system energy rich molecules in biological systems and once these are formed their conversion to energy efficient fuels or biofuels and there it is out here we will talk about the concept of biorefineries. Now in terms of the detailing it out, so here in this segment we will talk about the dark reaction or carbon fixation reaction of photosynthesis. Whereas, in this process phase 2, this conversion we will talk about these fixed carbons which are formed how they are converted into liquid and solid and gaseous fuel, liquid, solid and gaseous fuels for industrial application. So, this is the overall schema of things what we are going to follow. So, just to follow up with give you a how we are proceeding at this stage, so that you do not lose track of what all we have talked about in module 
module 1, where lecture 1 to 5, we had talked about energy to the concept of bioenergy in module 2, which is lecture 6 to lecture 10, we have talked about energy harvesting, that is energy harvesting from sun by plants. This was the key theme and now we are moving into module 3 or which falls under one common module D U L A module 3 where we will take it further forward as we have talked about the carbon fixation. So, now remember where we ended the last class. So, again getting back to the reaction where we ended the last class was CO2 plus H 2 O forming C H 2 O plus oxygen. And we have talked about this reaction in our earlier section and the role of manganese cluster or water splitting cluster. Now, we will be talking about this part. which is the dark reaction or also synonymous with Calvin cycle. Now, while talking about this, I told you that there are three things which are coming out of the process. One, you are having uh, oxygen as a byproduct, as I have already shown out here. You could see that this is one of the byproduct. The other byproducts which are coming out of this whole process we talked about was NADPH, uh, a strong reductant. So, all of you remember that and whereas, oxygen is considered as the strong oxidant. Apart from it, we talked about there are formation of ATP molecules, which are weak oxidant and weak reductant. So, now our journey starts with this molecule, where this NADPH is fed. Now, when you see this reaction, it looks fairly simplistic, but to tell you the beginning of the century, when this reaction of CO2 plus CH plus water making CH2O or the carbohydrates or uh, plus the oxygen, things were not clear. How things are not clear? If you look at this reaction, so your first guesswork will be, is it carbon dioxides are coming together and they are attaching like CO2, CO2, CO2 is making carbohydrate or there is something else. And if this thought strikes, so what is happening here? Say, for example, CO2, 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 and there is some kind of a hydrogen coming through, or in other words, there is a reduction taking place like this, you know, 
in the form of hydrogen and it is getting reduced. Is that the reaction it all started or there is something else and nothing was known. So, the way I am trying to put the story is that I wish you to think that what we read in the textbook like when the things are given all the formulae are given that is not the way. There is a history behind it and you can only appreciate this biomass formation and the bioenergy when you know the history right who were the people who laid the foundation stone for a field a very emerging field of bioenergy. So, as per my wisdom the very first person who made an inroad into this area and uh, rest of his life he is no more who dedicated his life on understanding this concept how CO2 is getting converted into carbohydrate was Melvin Calvin. Melvin Calvin was an American chemist and uh, around 1945 he joined in the radioactive lab in Berkeley and uh, this was the time of uh, second world war. So, if you guys remember when I showed you the history of things I told you it all started during 1800, 1700, 1800 likewise. In 1900 uh, for mankind it uh, was one of the very interesting century, a century where uh, radioactive isotopes were discovered followed by DNA structure was elucidated. Much earlier than that during 1945 in the cyclotron there were some of those radioisotopes which were being formed like C14 carbon that is basically a carbon 14 isotope. So, whenever you write CO2 so, which assuming the carbon is in it is 12 oxidations uh, 12 atomic number. So, you could have C labeled with C 14 isotope something like that. So, you know that this carbon dioxide which is formed has formed from C 14 because it has a radioactive tag in the form of that additional atomic number what you see out there or, or uh, additional mass what you see out there which helps it to be tagged at any point it gets incorporated into it. And 45 soon after Japanese have surrendered and the whole world was in a turmoil post uh, second world war time it is during that time Melvin Calvin started his research at Berkeley. And uh, the very first thing what they did how this whole dark reaction concept started to pan out was very interesting. So, the organism or the system what they picked up was chlorella. Uh, just to write it down for you people one second. So, chlorella L O R E L L A. Chlorella is a algae and <clears throat> you can really culture chlorella in the lab and you could have a number of life uh, generations of chlorella. So, they picked up chlorella as their organelle of uh, organism of choice to study the photosynthesis. The way they did it was very interesting. <clears throat> they developed a apparatus which is named as lollipop. So, so, this apparatus essentially what they used to do is that so, you have the chlorella there and in that milieu you inject the radioisotope of radioisotopic carbon dioxide this CO2 which is already labeled I am just putting the label with the asterisk. Okay? So, now if I told you the reaction just earlier than that if this CO2 which is labeled now is being taken up whatever it will form if this CO2 say so the reaction is like this say for example, here is you have the chlorella okay. 
Now, this chlorella is it has chloroplast and everything. So, this chlorella is receiving the light and in that process our thing is that CO2 plus H2O is forming CH2O plus oxygen. Okay. So, now we are not bothered about the second reaction H2O2O2, we are only bothered about this reaction. Now, if this reaction is taking place, now what you will see is that if in the presence of, so if you culture them in the presence of, I am just putting a red dot on the CO2, so that carbon, if this carbon is labeled automatically the CH2O N which is formed will also be labeled. Now, if this one is labeled, if this molecule is labeled, then this molecule will be radioactive because it is a radioactive isotope. Now, any form of carbohydrate which will be formed will be radioactive. Now, the catch is something else. Catch is how fast this reaction is happening like CO2 plus H2O, CH2N plus oxygen. What they did was, so say for example, there are events which are happening. Okay. Now, let me just help you to visualize what does that I mean. Say for example, this is a compound say X, X it forms Y, we know this X forms Y, but X does not form Y in one step, it goes through a step like say X1, X2, Y1, Y2, Y, Y3 likewise and then it forms Y. Say for example, these are the different states through which it passes and these states are function of time. So, on the x axis what you are seeing is a function of time. So, now how you can isolate these different states? You can only isolate different states if you can, if you can mark my word carefully, if you can stop this reaction from x to y at different time point. You stop it at time point, at this time point, at this time point, at this time point, at this time point and you freeze that moment. In other words, this particular time, this reaction would not move any further. So, what you will have in your reaction mixture will be x and x1. Similarly, if you freeze it that time, you may have maybe some form of an x if at all it is there, maybe little of x2 and y1 or x2 or x sorry yeah x x1 and x okay similarly if you freeze it at this zone then what you will have maybe you have of course y1 you will have x1 you will have x2 maybe you may have x you do not know you cannot predict because we do not know how much of each one of these component has convert it into the next one. And now, if you this simplistic reaction, if you think of it, it is a very cumbersome process. So, their journey was really cumbersome in the, when they started it somewhere around 1945. So, what they did? So, they grew chlorella like this and they freeze the moments, how they freeze the moment. So, they allow this reaction, so that your reaction is out here, I am not anymore writing the other reaction. And there is one more thing I just wanted to add, for the simplicity sake, I am adding this. Uh, what is essentially happening? CO2 to CH2O N, okay. now whereas on the other hand, what is the other reaction? H 2 O 2 O 2, right. So, this hydrogen is getting fed here, which is essentially a reduction reaction. This is a simplistic way you can visualize the whole thing and this is exactly what I was trying to tell you. This hydrogen is fed in the form of N A D P H and here what we are trying to figure out 
how this CO2 with whom this CO2 add, because CO2 either there are two options, either CO2, 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 lot of CO2s coming together by some XYZ enzyme which is present here is converting it into carbohydrate or CO2 is attaching to somebody. Maybe there is another carbon source present in the plant or in the green, green leaves or in the chlorella. What is the answer? So, this is the question what we are going to have because why this is so significant to understand this very core of the fundamentals because that is what you will help you to understand the whole process of modern day what we talked about carbon carbon sequestration. or CO2 capturing. So, that is why instead of really going on a very applied aspects of it, which is fairly easy for me to do, I wanted to you know bounce on you to think rationally that how possibly this kind of reactions are really taking place. So, with this technical know how that CO2 is getting reduced to form CH2ON. This is the very, very first reaction which is happening, but then with whom CO2 is attaching, what they did. So, how they freeze the moments, this is very interesting to really realize. It is 1945, always remember the time 1945 and today we are sitting in 2017. And you will look, you will think with the awe and appreciation for the amount of research went on there. So, they allow the reaction. So, you have the, so they took the chlorella, here is your chlorella, expose it to sunlight, H nu, here you have the chlorella and allow the reaction to move assuming and of course, this is growing in the presence of CO2 which is labeled CO2 showing the radioactivity out here. Do not get confused it with the free radical, it is basically CO2 which is a radio level. So, I am just marking it in case you forget radio labeled C14 isotope and you stop the reaction at say 5 seconds, you react 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 60 seconds or 1 minute likewise. You are just, so how you are stopping the reaction? So, this is your time in seconds and how you are freezing the reaction. So, the way they tried several ways to do it and uh, I will recommend here. I will, I will hasten to recommend here, I will supply you the Nobel lecture. So, Melvin Calvin won the Nobel prize 1965 probably 61 or 65, I have forgotten that, I will just get that for you. Read through the Nobel lecture. So, <clears throat> what they did at every time point, they put the whole chlorella this thing into alcohol and that is where you are freezing, everything get frozen. So, so, you are freezing this moment in say alcohol, I am just putting OH, okay. frozen. So, you are freezing the moment, I am not saying freezing really, it is a frozen, frozen the moment. So, that, so if you follow me in the previous slide, what I was trying to explain you is something like this. You are freezing this moment, you are freezing this moment, you are freezing this moment, likewise you are freezing different moment. So, here what exactly that is what they did, they froze the different moment and they put in them al alcohol and then what they did, they <coughs> run them in each one of these whatever the product which is getting formed here, they ran it on a paper chromatography column 
paper chromatography is one of the techniques by which you can separate out the different product in two dimension. Okay. Please go through this technique, it is one of the very powerful separation techniques till this date everybody uses. Those who want to isolate the different molecules which are formed during a reaction. So, using paper chromatography, they started getting the different products on it, but challenge starts there. What are those products? Since 1945, for next 10 years or so, the journey was, and if we if we show you that the very, very first with the 60 seconds what they got was something, if you see the graph, it was extremely complex like this on a paper chromatographic plate, it was now think of it, each one of them are scattered around with different atomic, <coughs> atomic ma uh, different molecular mass. So, now you have to figure out what this blob represent, what this represent, what this represent, what this represent, what this represent. So, the more you go on the time side, the more larger time window you are looking, you are going to get too many of this. So, they wanted to shorten the time window. So, I will close in here today for this first lecture, this section, then we will come which were the first one, very, very first one they discovered and how they discovered this journey of discovering molecule by molecule. And it is one of the most beautiful work which laid the foundation stone of today what we call about the biomass to bioenergy and this whole field. This is where it all started. And from here, we will talk about Rubisco, we will talk about photorespiration, we will talk about the C3, C4 and then comes how these are being processed. Okay, I will close in here. Thank you.